In today's video, we're gonna be covering the elbow freeze. Yes guys, elbow freeze tutorial. I think it's fair to say that you do not and will not have the elbow freeze locked until you can cycle through a bunch of different shapes within your elbow freeze. It's also gonna require you to be able to transition into the elbow freeze from certain positions like a rollback, from standing, etc. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I am AJ47 from Soul Mavericks Crew. Subscribe if you are new, like the video if you like the video, share it with a friend who you think it might benefit. It really helps out the channel when you do share and it helps out the b-boy or the b-girl that you share it with. I first learned the elbow freeze from the Willpower DVD in 2003. Really, the freeze is pretty easy. I had a much harder time struggling with chair freeze just because of the flexibility levels wasn't there. With the elbow freeze, you don't need any flexibility to learn this at all. Strength does come into play, but it's more about balance and what you do with your hands your fingers in the position. I'm gonna go over all of that stuff, so don't worry, let's get into this video. Ready? Leg out. The first thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is arm positioning, and that's probably the most important part before we do anything else. Okay, so you can imagine there's a square here. Top two corners, bottom two corners, like so. I'm gonna place one elbow down. I use my left hand as my master hand, so this is gonna run along this line of the square. Now this hand, if it goes at the top, it's hard to balance. I would recommend putting it down right to the bottom of the square. This can kind of go in here, and this can kind of drift in a little bit, but the more you drift in, the thinner your balance position, so the more chances that you're gonna fall over. Try and keep it here, but it sometimes naturally does go like this. When you're doing moves like elbow track, they kind of go in a little bit anyway, so, it, you know? So in terms of actually balancing, I'm pressing all my fingers into the floor. I kind of do this, so I have an arch in my hands, like I've got claws. Okay, I have an arch and I have an arch here, and this allows me to move forward and backwards. Once you start getting really strong, I mean, when you lean forward, you can then auto-correct, and you can even push back up through the shoulder like this. In this clip here, you can really see me adjusting my hands and squeezing my fingertips and pressing them into the floor. I want you to apply this when trying any freeze upside down. This is essential for maintaining balance and building strength. Now, we're gonna talk about leg positioning. Here's a great little way to start learning how to kick up. This is what I teach a lot of my students. Hands down into the position that I said, side of the square, bottom of the square. The same level that's down, keep the same leg on the floor and arch this up, okay, like this. Use this to swing, like so. Now watch this, touch, see that? Swing up, touch. Come back down, swing up, touch. And then on the next one, you're gonna try and hold it, okay? So you're gonna swing up and touch. Swing up, touch, try and hold. You can use your head to pivot forward, you see that? That's how, how I can count that. So if I go too far this way, I'll bring my body that way. If I go too far backwards, I'll go back up that way. Okay, obviously easier said than done, but once you've had a fair bit of practice, it is a re relatively easy move. As we practice, go to about 80%, once your body starts getting tired, come down, rest. Because if you fatigue, you're just not going to be able to hold it. There's too many, <laughs> there's too much wobble going on here. You've got only like two points of, of, of contact. So it's harder, okay? You, when you've got your head on the floor for like a baby freeze or even the forearm headstand, it's much, much easier. Just on the arms, it, it does get tiring. And also, not having your legs in a correct shape. So if they're like a half shape, it can really sort of drain your energy because you're having to use your muscles more for strength and not focusing on the balance. This next shape is probably the most common one for the elbow freeze. Let's talk about it. Because I'm on my left hand, I'm gonna extend my right leg. That's the one that's gonna be straight. And the left leg is gonna be the one that arches back and tries to touch my lower back. I'm gonna kick up off my left leg and extend my right leg. And then I should be able to see my foot, okay? Now, a common part is that people don't know how to use their hips and they end up doing this, or they arch back, which is a bit weird. It's a bit difficult to control. You wanna bring the hip down like you're doing a stretch, a jazz split, which is this one. So, you're kind of doing this. If anything, to be more accurate, you're doing this, okay? This is an important part. The elbow that's on the floor, that shoulder has to do most of the work, whereas the support arm's just stabilizing. But this is the arm that you kind of need to have strong. And there is some element of strength to it because once you, you go below a certain point and you're not strong, you can't auto-correct. So if you put your hand here like this, um, like so, and you push the elbow up, you feel all this muscle here pushing. That's the muscle you need to push with when you're up. I'm gonna go up without activating that and then I'm gonna activate it and hopefully you guys on camera should be able to see me elevate a little bit. One side of the square, top bottom, bottom of the square. Now watch my shoulder. I'm up, I've balanced, looking at my foot. Now you see this? You see that? Auto correction, you see that? Dipping a bit too low, 
autocorrect. This is the against the wall technique. Um, gauge how far you are away from the wall, kind of put your elbow somewhere in line with this knee, like this, as you can see, like this shape. So that's kind of gauge, like, okay, I know how far I am across the wall from the wall. Place my elbow here, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go up, put that foot here, use it to lift up, find my balance point, and then shift my hips over a little bit more, and then eventually tap off, you see that? Okay, and now I've got my balance point. When I wanna come down, I can literally just walk down the wall and make it nice and safe, okay? But um, again, not my favorite, but you can try it. It does work, so yeah, give it a shot. Now let's talk about falling and falling safely, okay? So if anyone's ever watched the WWE or wrestling, when they do things to each other like suplexes or they get hit and they end up on their back, what they do is they catch themselves on the top part of their shoulders and their feet. So they lift their hips, their lower back off the floor. Their lower back never touches the floor. So they'll land like so. This is really important for breaking. We use this when we do things like web or we drop from high and we fall. Like we all do it. It's like a, it's a big safety move. So if we go up like this, dropping like that kind of shields us from the impact that we would have if we landed on our lower back basically. Because the foot takes the impact and the shoulder takes the impact. And in this case, what we're talking about is falling over from the elbow freeze and taking the impact here. So let me deliberately fall over and show you. Elbow freeze going over, land, okay? See that? Lower back doesn't hit the floor, nice and safe. Impact taken on my feet. Just probably don't do it barefooted on hard floor. Your feet slap the floor, it's still gonna sting. Obviously try to get this elbow freeze on both sides. Once you've got it on both sides, um, especially when you're learning something like elbow trek. Um, for me, my master arm is my left. So that's my takeoff arm. That's the arm I will take off on. So I have to spend a little bit extra time working on my catching arm because my catching arm is not my master hand. Some, some b-boys are different. Some b-boys and b-girls are different. They might be the other way around. So they might still go counterclockwise like myself, but this will be their um, their takeoff arm will be their weaker arm and their catching arm will be their strong arm. So they'll catch and they'll be really strong here But then when they take off they're, they're, they're a little bit weaker So you'd have to you what you have to do is kind of Foresee that into the future know which way that you rotate know which arm is your master arm and know which arm You're going to catch on whether it's going to be your weaker arm or your stronger arm Whatever arm is your weaker arm, that's the arm you need to spend more time training. You need to spend more time training that because when you're upside down and you're catching, usually you're gonna fall over and you need to be able to catch with that hand whether you're upside down on an elbow freeze or in a handstand. You wanna spend some time training the other arm just for safety and also just to make those moves easier. So two things, okay? So consider that when you're practicing the elbow freeze. Definitely get it on both sides, 100% necessary. When I first learned the elbow freeze, I just straight up learned the elbow freeze. Um, but looking back retrospectively, I suppose a good way to learn the elbow freeze would be to start with a forearm headstand and then placing the elbow, um, the knee on the elbow. So I'll show you what that looks like. Now, the reason why I also don't like this way is because when I'm teaching it to my, to my real world students, I notice that what they do is they grab the back of their head. So this hand is no longer active. They're just using here, this extra balance point and here. So there's no control going on. So when they fall over, they fall over because their hands trapped behind their head. So I'm gonna show you this way and I'm gonna show you what my hand does, all right? Because the natural thing to do is people grab their head like this or they make a fist here. I say do this, okay, like this. So when you go up, you can balance like this, okay? Okay, and you've got this balance point, see that? Now, if you really wanna to add to the elbow freeze, you can bring your leg here and you can squeeze this heel towards your bum and then it's easier to lift up. See what I'm saying? Like this. Let me show you this again from the other angle, from the front. So again, you go onto your head, forearm headstand, grabbing the floor, here and up, that's one, that's two, you can go up to here, so that's three, and then to here, which would be four. Okay, make sense? Excellent. If you do not have that luxury to have a soft floor, you can always use a kind of elbow pad. There are some linked in the description down below, um, which is on my landing page on Amazon, and you can see a bunch of like the, the elbow pads that I would use. It's the same as the Mick David knee pads that I, I've talked about enough times in my video. I have the same thing for my elbows. But obviously, when I've got a floor like this, with, which is mats, 
uh, I don't need it. So yeah, it's up to you. So what are your clear goals for learning the elbow freeze? Number one, learn the elbow freeze on both sides to balance. Aim for 30 seconds and be able to do it three times for 30 seconds so it builds your endurance with this move. Number two is to learn different shapes. So practice as many different shapes as you can with the elbow freeze on both sides. One is necessary for sure, but on both sides will help, especially if you stack freezes and you wanna change shapes and you just wanna be fresh with your freezes, learn the shape changes on both sides as well. And number three, try getting to the elbow freeze from different positions. By swinging into it from the floor, from the knee, do it from standing. I find that doing it from standing makes things a lot easier. So definitely give that a try. Just remember that when you're going down, you press with the elbow, so I'm gonna put this elbow down on the floor. This whole hand is, is stopped on the floor. I'm really pushing here. This slows down the drop. So when I land, I land here and not here. It makes a big difference, especially when you're doing this with your arm. You see that kind of weird, like, you know, the salt, the, the pepper thing, right? You're kind of doing that as you're lowering yourself down and that will control the drop, okay? It's just using this muscle here and really using the tricep to lower yourself down. If, even if you just do that, you can really feel the forearm contracting and the tricep really slow. Okay, so it goes slow and then snap. I'll show you what I mean. Go up slow, snap. See that? So once you've got the snap, you've got the balance, okay? It's really important because for me, I used to just drop and smash onto the floor, even with a like, big elbow pad when I started out. But yeah, dropping down with a big elbow pad, and I, and I smashed my elbow so many times just doing it. Um, I've now got like a permanent sort of callus here, which is not fun to have, um, which is like hardened fluid. So every time I put my elbow down on the hard floor, it kind of hurts a little bit. So you don't want that, you want to avoid that. And trust me, it's not fun, especially when you're doing elbow tracker or something all the time. You have to wear like a, like a pad or a sweatband or something. Because it's not fresh to wear one of those, you have to wear it under a jumper, but then the jumper makes you slip a little bit more. So just bear that stuff in mind uh, when you're learning these things. Try and avoid those injuries, and that's why I'm here to teach you guys so you don't have to make those mistakes that I made when I was learning this stuff. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like the video if you like it, subscribe if you are new. If you're a long-term subscriber, Check out the ways that you can support the channel listed in the description and down below. That's it from me, guys. Uh, as always, stay fresh, stay clean, and I'm going to catch you on the next one. Peace.